When I first looked at this game, I thought it was just another card game, and I thought nothing of it. Flesh and Blood really is a card game about love, and love for TCGs, and getting people together. It's about bringing people in flesh and blood to each other. Over the calling weekend in Sydney, you could really see how much love there was for this game, and how much the developers sacrifice their time for something that they believe is a beautiful thing. I really enjoy this game. I hope this picks up just as quick as any other card game and stays around for a very long time. This is the footage and what I caught from Sydney Calling. I'm no photographer so there is some cuts every now and then as where my battery was dying or my camera was running out of space. Enjoy. Over to them in just one minute. Um, firstly, there's toilets here, men's on my left, ladies over here. There's a bar there. If you need anything, sleeves, deck boxes, come see us. Um, other than that, welcome. I hope you have a great day. Um, it's a big event with lots of people you might not know, so please look after your stuff. It is your stuff. Don't leave it lying around. Things do go missing at large events. Um, and over to James. Thank you, Lindsay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Calling Team Case of Me. When we set out to create Fish and Blood, it was for this exact purpose to bring people together in the Fish and Blood through the common language of playing great games. Yeah. Today, and in the great local game stores across Australia, week on week, we are achieving that. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being the original flesh and blood community in Australia and New Zealand. In many years to come, when there are millions of fans playing flesh and blood across the world, you can all say that you were there in the beginning. You are the ones who had an eye to see something great has arrived. And it's our plan that you're all rewarded for that with a beautiful alpha edition cards that you own. I want to say a special, special thank you to the team at the Games Crew, Lindsay and Alex, for partnering with us to bring you this event today. To award-renowned head judge Dan Smith and the great judge team that he has assembled for today's event. And for all the people who have travelled near and far to be here, especially my loyal fan base from New Zealand. Thank you for making the Yeah, event. woo! great games today, that you open some beautiful cards and that you embrace the mental challenge to master and become a champion of flesh and blood. Thank you. Hi team, my name is Dan. For those of you who aren't familiar with me, I'm your head judge for today. Uh, all the judges today will be wearing this beautiful yellow and black shirt, so we stand out. Feel free to call a judge if you need any assistance. Um, I just have a couple of notes before we get started. So the call is a professional level event. For those of you who had a chance to check out the policy documents, it has all the penalties listed. We will be enforcing professional level penalties. Uh, ideally, we want to hand out as few penalties as possible. So as long as you guys are playing clean and calling judges if you have any issues to resolve, it should be all good. Um, there will be eight rounds of Swiss in this event before it cut to the top eight. The top eight will be draft. The Swiss portion will be sealed. So if you make it to the top eight, we'll go through the drafting process at that time, so don't worry about too much about it now. Um, so there's coverage during this event, so the uh, LSS guys will be taking photos and maybe some video as well. We have some influencer people taking videos as well. If you have any particular objection to appearing in videos or appearing in photos, just make sure you let one of the team know. Uh, right, end of turn procedure. So uh, there'll be a timer up on the screens. When time goes, I'll also do an announcement on the mic. It's three turns total, so the current active player is turn zero. Zero, one, two, three. If at the end of turns you do not have a result, the match is a draw. So it's not highest life or anything like that, it's someone needs to die. So ideally, you want to try and play to win. There's very little advantage of playing to time in this game. Uh, pairings will be available on the core 40 thing that has the calling posters on this side, 
You have a whiteboard thing over this side, so you have plenty of place for pairings. Try not to clump if you can, try to get two tables as quickly as possible when pairings go up. Um, if you need a judge, can any of my players from previous events please demonstrate how to do a judge call? Judge! There you go, one of those. Hand up in the air, nice loud call. Keep your hand up in the air until a judge comes to find you. We'll make sure you get sorted out. Uh, if for any reason you're unhappy with the ruling given to you by one of the four judges, <coughs> you always have the right to appeal. If you appeal, I will come and deliver a final ruling for you. Uh, so in a minute, we're, oh, actually I'll get to the rulings first. So there's a couple of like card specific notes, just because this might be some of your first big tournaments. Uh, so we'll just go through some sort of tricky pain points that might come up. Uh, if you choose to play Dorethea today as the hero, uh, a defense reaction has to have resolved for it to become a defending card. So where this is relevant is if you activate a card that has an effect and also has a reprise effect when your opponent hasn't blocked with anything, and then later on they activate a defense reaction, you don't retroactively get the reprise effect. The reprise effect has to be active when you play the card the first time. Uh, additionally, her effect does not give your weapon go again. It just allows you to attack with it a second time. So you need to have already generated an extra action point or already had go again on your weapon attack in order to attack with it a second time. Also, Dorithia is once per turn. So you can only ever attack with your weapon twice. There is no situation where you can ever get a third attack out of it. Uh, and Bravo's hero ability and his hammer both care about the casting cost of the card, not the pitch cost of the card. So the number in the top right, not the number in the top left. If you have any issues with any of this, call a judge. Uh, other than that, I think we'll just go through the process of deck registration. <coughs> if you've never played a sealed event before, deck registration is a little bit different to construct it. In front of you, you have a sheet of paper and some packs. Uh, what you're about to do is you open your packs. Those are the cards you own, those are the cards you're going to be playing with, and those are the cards you're going to take home today. Once you've had about five minutes, open your packs. You're going to hand all of your cards over to the person sitting across from you, and they're going to hand their cards to you. You're going to spend about 20 minutes writing those cards down on the list in front of you. Oh, Lolly, to give you a list too, because I assume you won't put your names on it. Anyway, you write the cards down on the list. You need to be very careful that you're writing down the correct quantities, and that you're writing down the correct pitch columns. The pitch columns are color coded the same as the cards. So there's a blue column, a yellow column, and a red column. Which makes it a little bit easier. Once you've had 20 minutes to sort the cards and register the pool, you're going to hand back the list and hand back the cards, and then you're going to get five minutes to check to make sure it's correct. Keep in mind, the list that you get handed back and the cards you get handed back are your responsibility. If you get deck checked during the event and the cards you're playing do not match the list, you will be penalized, not the person who wrote it down. So it's important that you check it to make sure that it's correct. Once you've checked it and it's correct, you'll be given 30 minutes to make a deck out of those cards. The only thing you have to choose when you register your deck is the hero you play. The hero you choose to play will stick with you through the entire tournament. If during the tournament you want to swap around which generic cards you're using, or maybe play some class cards that weren't your deck originally, that's fine. You don't have to tell anyone else to do anything about that. Your pool is your pool. You can move around as much as you want. But you can't say, change from Bravo to Ryan out halfway through the tournament. You pick Bravo at the start, you Bravo all the way through. Cool. Any particular questions about deck registration? Sweet. I'm going to get you started then. So, you have five minutes as of now to open your packs. I didn't record any of the pack opening as far as validating cards and all that goes. I felt like it would have been a little bit too cheap to record when there's a bunch of people on the table opening their own packs as well. But I ended up playing Reinar. Um, it was the best option for me. I personally don't like playing Warrior. Um, and I really wanted to go into the event playing Ninja because I felt like it was a really weird contender to verse. Though um, I didn't pull any head jabs and I didn't pull any Drone of Brutality. So I wasn't able to play like a fatigue Ninja list. But my list ended up being pretty okay. So as far as my equipment goes, I basically the whole day just used Bark Bone Strapping and the Iron Rot Helm, though I did have the Heart and Cross Strap and the Iron Plating. My deck was fairly simple. Um, I had an Energy Potion that I used a lot on the day, actually. Versing a lot of Guardians when I just needed to slap something on the field while they had Stonewall Confidence up. Um, I had a Last Ditch Effort, which was basically my 
basically, because I didn't have drone brutality, I had to find something else to combat fatigue. And then I'll just quickly go through my list. I had three scar for scars. Uh, hold up. Three scar for scars. And I had a lot of uh, six attacks. But the main MVP of the day was uh, Primeval Bellow. Primeval Bellow, I thought was a really bad card, but in sealed, this card, you just discard a random card from your hand and then swing with your weapon. It's like a massive weapon buff. But yeah, I'll quickly go through it. I had technically th uh, four defense reactions, including sigils. Um... And three Scar for Scars, one of each color. And I think it was a total of 10 or 11 six attack or higher. So I was able to get a few Reinhardt discards off. Um, and I had one Regurgitating Slog and one Slogism. So I was hitting... So most turns, if I was able to open up against my opponent, I was swinging for about 14 damage. And that did come up a lot, versing a lot of people. Yeah, it's recording. Wait, have you fought uh, Sleeve Billy or something? Yeah, not me. So I ended up playing Brute. I don't really have a massive list for anything else. Um, See how we go. <laughs> but it's foil. It's foil, and at least got the foil romping club too. Did the sales continue? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I do have one red pot. I mean, I've got no way to keep my weapon go again. I mean, any of my attacks go again. You're going to have vertical attacks. Guardian? No. You don't need 35 points. Uh, so, mainly because I've got a huge nimbleism and I have nothing that's one of less, and so I can't actually resolve nimbleism. Yeah. So then I'm throwing a couple extra generics in there, which I can resolve with oh, my and, 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 and then I'm actually going to play a couple of slogans in this, because pitching slogans is going to make me this So like, those are the equipment that I can choose from. For me, it was like, if I got some dog jabs, I would have had this, this, and then um, the boys here. Yeah. Well, like, I was going to pay Brute, but I have this, and I have the Majestic for it. Like, but I also got Eyes and Peak as well. I don't know, I probably should have that. Are you Eyes and Peak? I wish I could. I never get a hell of yeah, I never get a hug. That's neat though. Wait, wait, wait. Did you get... Look. Did you get any head? No. I didn't even get an iron right Oh, I got an iron. No snapdragon scales. I'm like pretty happy. I got like two and a half bullies, two new singles. Um... Deck buildings on this top. Um, my main, yeah, my main reason why I'm playing this is because I got um, four generic French reactions, and then I got three stone. Ones. That's 
outside the shirts of right there. Oh, yeah. In fact, I'm pretty happy with this. Yeah, well, Do you want to uh, use that as a special? Oh, hey, Chief. You guys testing? No. Love, love, love. Can I grab your attention for a second? You're pretty in brute. Stop talking. Oh, not Oh, yeah. Shh, 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 shh. Hello. So, is everyone done? Great. In a second, we're going to put pairings up. Feel free to sit down at your table. Please do not begin until I tell you to. Thank you. And you? What are you playing? Huh? The only things I could um, play, I, I couldn't even play Brute. I had enough Brute cards, a good amount of Brute, but it still wasn't up to 30. I couldn't get up to 30. I could only get up to 20, and all my rest of my generics were, were like going to be worthless. It was just filling it in for no reason. So I had to play it. And then... Not a lot of Warrior today. Yeah. No one's playing Warrior today. I've not seen one. I haven't seen any warrior. I've seen about six guardians and one brute. Oh, well, I'm playing that. No? I've seen about ten guardians. No, 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 I'm not playing guardian. Playing warrior. I'm playing warrior. <laughs> oh, okay. I only have that because that was the only thing I had. Ah, okay. I had to fill it in. So I thought just have it in there just for just a, a constant three attack weapon. Flush blood pairs! Pairs are now available on the whiteboard! Next on minute we're paired up. Call call with call in posters we'll and on both monitors. Please find your table and sit down quickly. A reminder to not begin until you're told. Thank you. Damn, I'm so blind. <laughs> uh, no, table two is the number two. So I'll fix the res <laughs> Table 17, Travis. Oh. Yeah. I don't want to do it. Now that it's going to make Yeah? Playing Warrior? Yeah. Did you get anything good? From Ninja? This is real shit, bro. Right? Ninja cards. This is real shit, bro. <laughs> I don't want to play. <laughs> Compared to the calling Auckland, there was a massive difference as far as the meta breakdown for the total of all the players. It really did shift the way of Dorethea. That hero ability and weapon ability is so potent when it comes to being able to play tempo and just being able to gain stacks on the weapon. Katsu only saw a 10% play, though I don't believe the hero is that bad. I still believe that... This is just the hero that people can't choose all the time because they didn't pull the right cards. And if you do manage to pull the right cards, I feel like Katsu still has a better advantage over, let's say, Warrior when it comes to being able to finish games. Reinar and Bravo definitely are the odd picks. Both of them seeing the exact same amount of players playing. And I didn't really expect any less when it comes to Reinar and Bravo. I didn't record any of my own matches, though first off I versed a Warrior, which I won. Secondly, I versed Luke Badger playing Guardian. I lost against him. It was a very close match, I'd say. There were some points where it felt like I could swing it back, but he just had an immense amount of defensive cards and being able to heal back with all of his blessing of deliverance is proccing three times or two times my next match i believe was a mirror match between a brute player i don't exactly remember this match at all though i'm pretty sure it came down to a regurgitating slog finisher next i verse bodum temnik 
which was also another Reinar mirror match, which I ended up winning somehow, where I think it came down to who could hit the biggest to pull as much cards out of your opponent's hand, and then I eventually was able to just overrun him. I then first a warrior player. Now this warrior player ended up actually topping and it came down to time where he had no card, basically no cards left in his deck and I had a few cards left in my deck. We were both on one health each. No, I was on one health and he was like on seven health I believe. Um, and he had his last swing for turn and I could have either blocked the entire attack and then making it a draw or basically just not block the whole thing and then him able to win the match which I ended up giving well not giving the match but he ended up winning the match I then versed Sasha who's Marco victory and this was probably the most blood boiling match of the entire day both me and him were neck and neck for the last probably 15 minutes both of us making misplays left right and center and it came down to one health versus one health for probably the last eight minutes. I could really see how Sasha did come second in the Auckland event. The amount of strategy he puts behind all of his plays and everything really does show how good of a play he was. I ended up losing to him, so this probably knocked me out of the entire getting to top eight. Though Sasha as well didn't get top eight as well. I feel like I'm missing a match in here somewhere. Though after this match, I adversed a Guardian player, who I had originally met in the past and ended up winning that match. The rounds were so quick, it was really hard to put in any uh, footage at all. As soon as you finished your match, which was 30 minutes, they'd go straight to the other match. Um, I personally don't mind it like that. It was just a bit hard to set up the camera or turn on the camera, charge the, the battery and then turn on the camera. Um, it was just a lot easier to take photos, so that's what it ended up doing anyways. Though with every single TCG, there has to be a winner and a loser. The top 8 came down to 3 Donrithia, 2 Reinar, 2 Bravo, and 1 Katsu. I think this really shows how strong Katsu can be, as only 10% of the players played Katsu, and one of them managed to get through. It's definitely one of the harder ones to play, um... Though there is definitely a lot of skill in that leader, so maybe in the future we'll probably see a bit higher play with Katsu. But so far, we had one Katsu player, top 8. The top 8 plays, I'm not sure who played what, though it came down to Hayden Dale, Kenny Nugan, Matt Rogers, Nick Butcher, Jizen Long, Nick Garside, Kale McCreeth, and Michael Deliake. I took as much footage as I can of the drafting process. It was very hard as my camera was dying and also was running out of space as well. So I got most of the first pack, some of the second pack, and then the whole last pack. I did jump around to show what most things were, what most plays were picking up. So it is a very sketchy video. We're all splitting, everybody shake on it. Everyone carries you in the middle. You'll be scum of the community if you don't. Yeah. Sweet, with that solid, I'm going to get this draft underway. Let's do it. It's pretty simple, we're all a community if you scum out of this. It's pretty easy to remember eight names if you need to ostracize someone horrifically. It'll be posted. Okay, so when I tell you to open the first pack, you're going to open the first pack and then you're going to have a minute to make your first pick. Is everyone, in theory, ready? Yes. Sweet, you have one minute, go. Oh, throw the tokens out by the way. Make sure you keep your eyes on your own pools, don't look to the left and right. Don't look at all the players. Oh, uh, left, left. You, you, your thumb is bending. <laughs> You have to put your picks face down, you're not allowed to look at them until I tell you to.
Okay, just because it's the first one. Stop, shuffle, pass to the left. When I tell you go, you'll have a minute. And then we're just gonna keep doing that over and over. Everyone pretty clear? Yeah. Alright, go. That was right. It's fine. Just uh, keep like this. Ready? Pass. Achoo. time between each pack to review your picks. Okay, so let's move to the next phase. Oh, you're also passing to the right now. So you're passing the other way. Just throw your tokens like this. Uh, yes. That's <laughs> 
Left again, don't have about just like all of my attacks. You can open them and look at them. Alright, go have a minute, go.
Pass. Pass. Okay, so, uh, so, all right, boy chat, uh, can you please double check and make sure you have 45,000 in front of you? If you don't, if you're a serious issue, something to let me know. judge watching you and you're going to register your own pool. Once you register your own pool, you're going to also be given time for deck construction. So, uh, Marcus, you, sorry, the guy behind you is Marcus. Are they going to grab these two? Um, just take them like, 
Yogi. Yes. Uh, well, these two guys, Johnny, these two guys, you two, you check these After the drafting process was over, each player had 30 minutes to decide their deck, build it, and then have a match with it. I did manage to record one of the top eight matches between Nick Butcher and his opponent. There was a slight mishap here where my camera did run out of battery. So I think I'm missing about six minutes of footage, which is only about one or two turns. I will soon be making a video where it will have all the life counter and everything on this video. But for the time being, I'm just going to put this one up as it is to save a lot of time. As this video, I think, would take about maybe maybe a whole day itself to edit. Yeah, no, I just like saying it's just taking pictures. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Just so you know, you, your faces aren't in it. So it's six. Six. Yep. Um, you got Karen, you go again? No. I'll block. Six. So that plus two, yeah. Plus and one. Then, so can you block with that again? Yeah. Or it just gets minus one, yeah. and you can block with it again. Um, No, it's a problem. Yes. <laughs> I have a red pen that I can find. Is your 17? Yes. It's just, it's just a bug. Dude. Yeah. Leave this down. Ah, that's it. So you took three? So you can't block with this anymore? No, I can't block with it anymore. Just four more next. The first action costs you an extra resource next time. And do you have a bell game? Don't have a bell game. Welcome to seven? Yeah. I'll sit that one on the door. Keep on 
Okay. So, hold on. Wait, 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 we have to go back. You were meant to pay for that one. Because I had college crush you last time. Oh, no, you didn't take damage. Okay, you didn't take damage. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yep, cool, sweet. Um, I'll take the three. <laughs> um, okay, I'll double it. So, does eight? Yeah. And what do we do if I... Your first attack loses minus two. Minus two? Yeah. Beginning of the action. Oh, yeah, beginning of the action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you not go again? Don't have one. You have no cards in hand? No cards in hand, Oh, you're right. Um, to 
again? Yeah. Swim? Currently no go again? I don't have go again. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. Have you got any mana available? No. Yeah, I'll do it. Sure. I was more worried about. I was worried about. I was worried about. I was worried I was happy to get a couple of players. Yeah, we got the third. What kind of jogging? Seismic. Sorry, which one? Seismic? Yes. Yeah. Um, Dan, do you still have tokens? Uh, no. What are you going to talk about? Oh, I'm using that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fresh out. So. Yeah. Um, just put a one on it. Just put a one on it. Um, Still one. I'll put that on. Yeah. I'll move it out here. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I can type it in. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's my job. Yeah. Yeah. It costs three or more, you get three plus. Yeah, I'm looking at your what you just did. I was just remembering. I'm not doing very much. Yeah, you already split your age. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty much. Positive. Yep. Take a token. Take a token. No, sorry. Dan, can we get a flock token? we get a flock token? Yes, sorry. Oh, yeah, I had like 20 of those. I just yeah, handed them all out. My bad, my bad. So currently, no go again? No. So what are you taking for? Four. Four. Then it's got um dumbbells. Oh, I didn't know that. 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 I didn't know that
I'll take a photo. I'm heading off afterwards anyway. I'm just going to go back. It's a bit cool. So it gets going? Yep. Yeah, it's the Yeah, it's what? Because I'm going to help you out. Yep. Five stop going on? Yeah. Okay, so this gets out. I don't know. I don't think they got around to... No, it'll do. It'll work it out. Well, we'll just do this. Make gem the price. Because I can do it all in one price. Do you have gem or work it out? And keep trying. It just means I have to work out the game. Put it in. I can't yeah. 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 No, Jason's not doing something like that. Oh, okay. Jason's doing it. Jason's doing it. Jason's doing it. Jason's Oh, I'll do it. I'll probably get a job yeah, I got it. Oh, you did it. Did it. Did it. Did it. Did it. Did it. Have a good one. Hello. Have a good one. Should uh, do a like Facebook yeah. group. Yeah, those two are very different. Yeah, yeah. One's like the cars in the gallery, and one's like the painting. Yeah, yeah. This was all the time that was going to be from the way you the same height as everyone sitting there. You probably dropped it. Well, I'm sitting down too, so. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, just standing on the lower platform. Two to eleven. Okay, is there anyone going to share it? Have a good one. What? Why is it doing well? There's your old man. Thank you for judging today. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for judging today. Come at all, my friend. Anytime. Yeah. I'll hopefully see you at another one. Yeah. That was nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Have a good one. Yeah. This doesn't have a problem. Like, wait, you just. So, how much are they around? Uh, you've done for six. Seven. Eight, eight, sorry. So I'm taking two? Yeah. That's good. Alright, so Nick, well, Nick. 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 N
Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, after this match, I ended up just leaving. Um, there was a few things that I had to do, and especially come home and edit these videos. I do have some other matches, some deck profiles and all that coming. Though the next match was Matt, who played Warrior, who versed Kale, who played Guardian. Matt ended up winning that match, and Hayden, who was playing Brute, versed Nicholas, who was playing Brute as well. The finals came down to Matt, who was playing Warrior, and Hayden, who played Brute. I'd love to hear any stories of how this ended out. Could probably talk about it either within the comments or within the Flesh and Blood fan page. But it ended out with Hayden taking the win. Now it seems like Hayden wasn't a nobody. He sat on the King of the Hill since round 4, which was the best player of the last event sits on that until they're overtaken by another player. And then Hayden kept that single spot until the end. I have the match where I have the last match where he versed another player who was playing Guardian, I believe, which I'll bring out within the week. So yes, congratulations to Hayden <clears throat> winning the Sydney Championship with Brute. I'm just very happy that it wasn't a warrior who won the event and was the Brute that we deserved. I really want to give a special thanks to all the card game shops within Australia. Um, especially Game Traders and, of course, GamesCube Parramatta, who ended up hosting the event. It's very, <clears throat> it's very rare that card game shops will pick up a new game, as it's very hard for them to sell product to people who don't know what the game is about. Usually it's very easy to just stick with the top three or the top five card games and just sell those. But these guys are the guys who are really making waves within the community, because without them purchasing product and ordering everything in, I wouldn't be playing this game right now. And of course, I cannot forget the guys at Legendary Story Studios. Every person that I met that worked at Legendary Story Studios, they have a mind and they have an amazing mind when it comes to card creation or deck building or anything within their field. They said that we are going to get more artists on the track as a lot of the Sydney and Australian artists did reject their offer to start with, but it looks like after this set, a bunch of them are heading back to make artworks for these cards. So what now? It's a really big, weird question. The event is over, so there's not a lot of things that people are going to be looking forward to for at least the next month or so. Though I'll be making content weekly. Um, I've got a lot of content coming out, especially with matches, deck profiles, and I think I'll be making some draft stuff down the track as well. For now, that's the video. I'm happy to be one of the first people who attended the first Flesh and Blood event within Australia, helping bring up a community. Sorry the video was so long though, but I really wanted to just chuck everything in the one video then make some specialized videos for other subjects as well. I really love this card game and I'll be sure to bring out more content soon. I'll see you in the next video.